the play I remember that I was just awed by had a picture up on the wall with the eyes cut out and lights would come on behind these eyes. We decided we wanted to sleep outside one summer. But mosquitoes did get to me then, and that's when I learned that if you put a newspaper over the top, the mosquitoes don't come through. Hmm. One of the horses got a wire cut, and the garage was heated. So Dad moved the horse in to take care of the cut. And in one of the Sadie Hawkins dances, Joe was taking Lloyd-Jones. So she brought the car out, collected all the clone and smelly stuff from the house. One of them told her that Lloyd would have preferred the horse smell <laughs> to the perfume. <laughs> So did they have adult dances at the Legion Hall? Oh, are you sure you want to go there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, that, that was, um, I started high school, 45, yeah, I started high school in 45, which was the year the um, war was over. And there were, uh, the, the veterans came home, a lot of them had married, it was a totally different younger crowd and they spent most of their time when they came to town up in the bars and my dad said that he couldn't stand to see all of that good music go to waste so the kids got in and danced until about midnight when the whole when the crowd came down from the bars they were dancers too and that, that was the day of the jitterbug, but we knew, and I, right now I can't remember when the signal was, but we knew when we might just as well go home because we were going to be kicked out anyway. <laughs> but from, oh, nine o'clock until midnight, we had three hours of good dancing there. And the crowds from, oh, Glasgow and Malta both came up. And was there live music for those? Yes. The Legion had them. There were Legion dances sponsored by the Legion. And so did you have to pay to go to those? I don't know. We may just have been welcome there so <laughs> the music wouldn't go to waste until midnight. Or maybe we did pay. And that was at the old Majestic Theater? Right. It still amazes me that Dennis's dad liked moving buildings that much and moved that out yeah. for a shop. Well, it was a big building. It was a good building. However, the going back in history, which I don't plan to do because I wasn't there to see it, but they had, you know, the picture of the um, curtain mm -hmm. painted, all of that. They had dignitaries from Glasgow, I would suspect it was a political meeting, came out and sat on the stage. And when they sat down in those black tail suits, the tails hung down. And one of the local little boys took scissors, the whole club, crowd here saw him and cut off one tail of each one. <laughs> and I grew up with that story. No one stopped him? They were from Glasgow. <laughs> no. Well, the men weren't aware that this was happening. He was doing it very quietly while one of them was speaking. And if it was the right person, no one in Hinsdale would have, right? Yeah, wouldn't have wanted to make his father unhappy. 
but the other thing that they had, and I would, I would say it was more during the war years, were theater productions. My mother was, was theater. I mean, she really appreciated that. But, so she wasn't too enthused about these amateur people. But the Bray, have you heard that word? Bray Theater Group? The Brays would come out with plays, um, sort of the, I want to use the word silly, the light farces, and give a play. I would say maybe five to seven players in the group, most of them from the fa same family, or the Bray was the last name of the family. And I don't know why I remember it, because there were other groups who came in. And where were they coming from? I think they started in North Dakota. Oh. And it, it was a depression thing. We need some way or another to support ourselves. And so they traveled from one place to another making what money they could. I don't imagine there was mu much. But boy, I sure liked them. And that would have been in the Legion Hall. Yes, they filled the Legion Hall. And at that time, there were those big double wooden seats that went up and down. And they put them up and along the back, and then there would be one set down for the to sit along the outside edges. And then put them down for any kind of a meeting or performance for that. But one year, they, besides having the tickets for the play, and I would assume that the Legion would have taken the cut out of that for, mm -hmm. um, they would have intermissions and they would sell. What I remember the most was that kind of a off-flavored maple taffy. It wasn't the nice sweet flavors we have now. Whorehound? No, it was more of a dull, not peanut butter, not caramel. I can still taste it. Like a toffee or? Well, sort of like a toffee, but a off-flavored one. But they would sell these boxes. And the incentive for selling the boxes of candy was that the cover or the lid on each box was a ballot. So they would offer a prize. And I remember the one particular prize was um, comb and brush, very pretty set. Oh. <laughs> and the, one who, the, the woman in town who got the most votes off the top of these candy boxes won the prize. And some things in life you are not too proud of. It came up when they started counting these votes. The Morehouse kids, and there were a lot of them, bought all they could and put their mother down for the uh -huh. prize. When they started counting the votes, they didn't know the local people, and they did not distinguish between Joan Rudder and Jean Rudder. So everybody who voted for either one of them went into the one pile, and Joan Jean Rudder got the brush set, which she was thrilled to get with, but you just, you're disappointed, and even at that time, I think we felt that way. I know my mother certainly did. But things happened. And the Brays managed to support themselves through the end of the Depression, and probably, and I don't remember whether they were there into the Warriors or not. But that was a completely different, different atmosphere, I think. Theater in the Nelson Garage Hayloft? 
Oh, that was, that was just absolutely unbelievable. And there weren't too many people involved with it, except the, the older Nelson girls, Carol and Shirley. Carol was an organizer. Boy, she, she organized everything. And we gave these productions, complete productions, not just little ones. And this, but the, I remember the Sealy boys were there, Albert and Charles, and I don't remember what other kids, Charlotte would have been involved. She lived right next door. But the play I remember that I was just awed by had a picture up on the wall with the eyes cut out and lights would come on behind these eyes. And this was the, I suppose the story was the, the grandfather who was trying to decide which children would inherit. So he was watching everything the, all of we little actors were doing down here. And I remember that so clearly because boy, that had to have been really good and it, it, it was we there was a, do you know what i'm talking about when i say the nelson garage no it burned when doris lived there but it was a big hipped roof barn sort of like the one behind the wobber place except this was a bigger one and had a whole loft up above it and where was it was right out in, in the alley behind the Nelson house, which is where Doris lived. Doris Mogan? The house where Patty Armbruster lives yes, now? Yes, that's the house. Okay. Okay, so bring me up to date. <laughs> Those are the words that I can't find most of the time. Doris had another house later. Well, yeah, but no, this was where she raised her family. And that the whole thing burned and she told me rather quietly once that she suspected we all had burning barrels out there behind and it was sort of when the spray cans were new she remembered having put the spray can in her burning barrel and she always wondered maybe if it hadn't just exploded and started mm -hmm. that garage on fire, but that was the end of our theater. However, one of the other good experiences of my life was going to SeaWorld in San Diego. And I loved the Little Otter performance. They did exactly the same thing. They had the picture up behind, the lights flashing behind it, the old grandfather walrus, would it have been a walrus? Big animal, the little animals going in, they just acted out the whole thing, and I was right back in Hinsdale, Montana, <laughs> with the eyes flashing from the picture in the back. Some things never change. Oh, the bandstand came in before that. Okay. It was our playhouse. And it was in between your house and the Legion Hall? No, it was right about where the monument of the Legion Hall is now. That was oh. the last place it was located. Right. It moved a few times before that. Right. But that's where, and it was almost personal property. There was a door coming in from the south, and there were steps that went up stairs. The bottom it was a full floor, I won't say eight feet, but it was well over seven, I'd say, up to the top. And then the railing on the top, you could run around and shoot at the Indians attacking, which we did. And played there just, it was nice and cool during the summer. And we had plays there, we played there, we did everything there. I'm not sure I ever heard a band play there. I think the band was sort of out of 
commission by then. But that was our playhouse. So did you ever have trouble playing outside because of mosquitoes? I don't remember any mosquito. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do remember mosquitoes. One summer, okay, there's not a building at the back of our lot now. My dad moved a shop there. Oh, that's the shop that went down to the sports at the track field, field where yeah. they keep the track stuff. Okay, when he got that there, it sort of shut off that back alley. We decided we wanted to sleep outside one summer. And um, it's hard for me to describe to you knowing you probably have never seen one of those old iron beds that lifted up and down. So it could that, be a couch or a yeah. bed. And we put that out there and built our, must have been dad's old um, bedroll, which would have been a tarp and mattress and bed, and slept out there all summer. But mosquitoes did get to me then, and that's when I learned that if you put a newspaper over the top, the mosquitoes don't come through. Hmm. I think we might have, I, now I would say spray, but I wonder if we didn't use them, some damp newspapers so they wouldn't blow off. But we slept all there, all summer there with the mosquitoes. All four of you? That would have been just Joe and I, Joe and me. So I remember that the building from the track field being more where we park cars behind the kitchen of the new school and Kay's shop being there in your alley. They were both there? I, you're right, it was Kay's shop there. Yeah. The one down there was, he, he built the one down there from the old barge. On the river? Okay, yes. They brought a barge up from Fort Peck and it had like the four the thick, thick planks. Used in building the dam? It, it, came, it was used there someplace. Okay. I'm not sure what it was used. Oh, the barge, yeah. That would have been from the dam. And that went into there Guy Seely used one of them for something, and that would have been down around the ice house. But yes, that was where we built the, he did, that was a garage. <laughs> that was another Lloyd-Jones connection. The, one of the, do, one of the horses got a wire cut, and the, the garage was heated. So dad moved the horse in to take care of the cut and until it healed. And then it had lost its winter coat so he couldn't put it back out in the field. But the car was there at the same time. And in one of the Sadie Hawkins dances, Joe was taking Lloyd Jones. So she brought the car out and this would have been after she was in high school, was very busy scrubbing all the smell from the horse in there and putting, uh, collected all the clone and smelly stuff from the house we had to get the car okay to take Lloyd to this dance with. And so the kids, was, some of them went by and it was the laugh of, that one of them told her, point out that Lloyd would have preferred the horse smell to the <laughs> perfume. 